G'day folks and welcome to an Oz Cycling Chasers update today, the 27th of November 2014. Today's National Cyclone Update is brought to you by Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. In terms of the three regions of Australia, the only region expecting the potential for cyclone development is the Western Australian region and only the very far western parts of the Western Australian region. Now this is a low pressure system that we have been watching this, this area of the Indian Ocean just continually churning out these low pressure systems. So far they've all moved west. This one in particular that the Bureau are mentioning here in their outlook is expected to move more in a southerly direction and so it may actually go get into the western area edge of our area of responsibility. Look, at no point is it expected to head towards mainland WA. But anyway, the, the potential here on Sunday is low, and I would say that we'll, we'll get into the low to moderate potential as we head further into early next week. Nothing going on for the NT, and similarly nothing going on for Queensland. So looking at the world in terms of cyclones we have one in operation or we've got a tropical depression which will turn into a cyclone there's almost a hundred percent chance of this happening uh, as it moves across towards vietnam now there is a low pressure system that looks remarkably like a cyclone here in the southwestern indian ocean however has just been stopped short of being named this is the area that the bureau are watching for potential development. Now the western edge of the Australian area of responsibility goes right out here to 90 degrees east which is exactly where this particular system is developing. So if it moves a little bit to the west it'll be in France's region, if it moves a little bit to the east it'll well and truly be in the Australian region. Now its expected track from that position is we're expecting it to move in a south to south southwest and then southeast direction and eventually peter out here in the southern Indian Ocean. That little low we, we were watching about a week ago near the date line has now since weakened and pushed out to the southeast just like it was expected to. And we should see one to two more cyclones here over the next week to ten days in the northwest Pacific. So the latest satellite image here shows us the low that we have been watching, which is close to being named. However, due to constant wind shear, it hasn't had a chance to really intensify too much. It was looking actually a lot better this morning than it is this afternoon. And the new area of interest is around here. And we should see that start to consolidate. At the moment it looks more like a trough as opposed to a low, but we should actually start to see some low level vorticity, uh, vorticity maximum in this area, which means just a maximum spin in this area. So we should start to see this actually develop into a low over the next two to five days. Here are the recommended tracks from the different model guidances. We can see here the GFS model. We can see that southerly motion followed by a southeast motion. But once again, we're not expecting it to uh, hit Australia. We, are, we might see the remnants of it uh, maybe create a little bit of drizzle over Western Australia in maybe one to two weeks. But look, that's still way too far ahead to look for this particular system. But in terms of cyclone, poten uh, cyclone impact potential, none at all for Australia from this. This is the UK Met track forecast, the FIM model track forecast, and finally the European model track forecast. So once again, you can see all pretty unanimous that it will form, uh, it will intensify, and it will push in a south and then eventually south, southeast to southeast direction. For the rest of today, we'll continue seeing a lot of shower and storm activity over the North Kimberley, and we have seen that a little bit around the western top end, not as much as there has been. Uh, across southeastern Queensland, we're expecting some severe thunderstorms, and in fact, we've had some severe thunderstorms already in the Brisbane area, and we're expecting those thunderstorms to extend to the northwest. Now, as we head into tomorrow, we're looking at a continuation of shower and storm activity over the North Kimberley, a, probably a little bit of an increase over the western top end, and maybe a little bit of an increase over the Gulf off country region and we'll continue to see some fairly intense coastal activity here uh, tomorrow in the southeast corner of Queensland. On Saturday we'll see that uh, that activity over the southeastern corner start to push a little bit further to the north in Queensland, uh, maybe a little bit of an increase in coastal shower activity over northern Queensland and certainly an increase expected of shower and storm activity over the North Kimberley but in particular the western top end region. Also the shower and storm activity that has been going on over inland WA pushing a little bit further to the east. Also uh, Perth in fact had uh, copped, a, copped a thunderstorm uh, today too. So 
Oh, I guess uh, it's a little bit out of character for the amount of for the amount of weather that's going on around the Perth district at the moment. Uh, this is one of their driest months, and they seem to be uh, getting more rain than northeast Queensland, which is which is quite interesting. All right, as we get into Sunday, we can see the activity pushing a little bit further to the inland parts. Not in in fact. Places like Mount Isa are, are in with a real chance at some decent rainfall on, on the Sunday from uh, shower and storm activity. Still coastal showers on the Queensland coast, uh, but nothing major. And then as we head to Monday, we see a lot more moisture into northwest Queensland and western Queensland in general. And look, this is going to be probably the case now from days 4 to 10, uh, or at least 4 to 8, where we're going to see a lot of moisture in this region of, of Queensland, an area that has missed out a lot in terms of rainfall over the past 12 months. Also, nothing to sneeze at is the amount of moisture that's creeping into the central and eastern parts of the Territory, which has been another very, very dry uh, section of land over the past 12 months. So if you take a look from Monday next week through to Thursday next week, we certainly see a lot of rainfall here in parts that really, really, really need it. Can't stress enough how much these parts really need some rainfall, folks. And the good news is that the guidance is pretty unanimous in this region receiving a lot of that rainfall. Uh, also, we're going to see a lot of thunderstorm activity across the Northern Territory. So if you're in Darwin, uh, you're going to see a lot more storm activity, uh, particularly once we get into Sunday and then further on from then. Uh, the North Kimberley, we're going to see thunderstorm activity really now located and centralised in that very far north and northeastern parts of the Kimberley, and we're going to see a big decrease in moisture over Western Australia. A big high comes in underneath here and pushes in easterly dry low-level winds, so there's no real chance here of shower and storm activity from about next Monday on. Uh, in fact, you'll start to see a decrease in that storm activity from tomorrow on. And if we look at the eight-day forecast, it's, uh, it certainly is a sight for sore eyes for a lot of places that don't get much rainfall, uh, that haven't got much rainfall over 12 months. And in particular, once again, talking about that northwestern parts of Queensland, central western parts of Queensland, even even seeing generalised falls of 25 to 50 mils, which is fantastic. Uh, and, and even parts of the Northern Territory here uh, possibly receiving up to 200 millimetres over the entire week. Areas still missing out are the North Peninsula and the Central Peninsula and Northern Inland Queensland and the Central Coast of Queensland, uh, sort of Mackay through to around about Cairns, although there, there will be some uh, shower activity or increase in shower activity across the North Tropical Coast. Alrighty, that's all we got time for today and we'll keep you up to date on what's happening with the WA Tropical Low in our next update on Monday night. Have a great weekend and I hope you get a storm in the meantime. Oh, and don't forget, if you want to learn a little bit more about the long-term potential of cyclones, both uh, we're seeing some potential in the Coral Sea and we're seeing some potential off the Kimberley Coast, if you want to learn more about that, please become an OCC subscriber.